Everything is just peachy, and then catastrophe strikes in the form of that dreaded squealing, whistling noise coming from the toilet, sounding like a jet engine taking off. You can simply leave it be, but with great power and tools comes great responsibility. The duty, the awful, soul-crushing weight of knowing life will have to wait because you're the only one who can fix this, this toilet making noise. So you shut off the water supply valve. With any luck, it will be a quarter turn ball valve and not a compression stem valve which sometimes leaks after years of use. Flush the tank and keep the flapper open. Yes, that's what it's called. A flapper. To let the maximum amount of water out of the tank. Unscrew the water supply line. These range from 6 inches to 20, with 12 inches being most commonly used. The top end of the line is a 7 8 inch female ball cock thread. Ha <laughs> yeah, ball cock. The plastic nut is made to be hand tightened or untightened without, most times, the use of tools. There could be some water, not much in this case. Remove the fill valve. One trick is to press down hard on the fill valve's column to compress the shank washer, releasing pressure on the lock nut, making it much easier to unscrew by hand. As long as you maintain some downward pressure on the fill valve, no water should spill from the bottom of the tank. Just be ready to catch what's left when you remove the shaft. I could tell you not to immediately empty that container back into the tank, but you'll need to do it a couple of times to learn that lesson. Either you know already, or you'll find out. To unscrew the 3 8 inch female compression nut on the other end of the line, you could use something like an adjustable wrench, or this, Rigid's Easy Change Faucet Tool. The cubed insert pops out and you'll find the right size for the 3 8 inch nut. It gives you enough leverage to initially loosen the nut. You should be able to do the rest by hand if there's no corrosion, because where pea splatters, metal corrodes. I'm putting on a new 12 inch connector. Start the bottom nut by hand to avoid cross-threading. And why that nut first? Often, the steel braided line seizes onto the nut as it's tightened. Since the other end isn't fastened, you can let the line rotate freely as you tighten that nut. The other, plastic end is much more forgiving and won't twist and choke the connector as it's tightened. And leave all those tags on, because swag. I've got a new fill valve. Similar, but by another manufacturer. The length is adjusted by releasing the slip ring and sliding the shaft up and down, either by rotating it or by tugging it like a crazy person. Set a length that's comparable to the valve you're replacing. Push the slip ring back and make absolutely certain it's snug. If not, the top half of the valve will take off like a rocket once the water's turned on. Remove all that extra stuff you won't need. Make sure to drop hard somewhere you'll step on, barefoot at 3 in the morning. Slip the valve back in and there's a slight adjustment to make. The float on this valve is a bit bigger than the previous one and rubs against the tank's foam insulation. Removing a small section of foam allows the float to move freely. The insulation doesn't make the tank watertight, it's just there to prevent condensation on the outside of the tank. Remove all that junk you just made and slip the valve back in. Connect the flexible refill tube, checking that it reaches the overfill pipe and doesn't impede the movement of the float or the tank lever. Push down on the fill valve again and screw on the lock nut. This new one is really made to be easily tightened by hand, but still, tightly. The 7 8 inch female ball cog thread nut ah, yes, that ball cock, of the connector is screwed onto the fill valve. Hand tightened, but really tight. How tight? So that it doesn't leak. That tight. Open the water valve. Be attentive to leaks and sudden spurts of water in your face. You might need to adjust the water level by using the set screw. And enjoy the fruits of your labor and marvel at the technology of the toilet. In the past, I've repaired other types of fill valves. The ones with the plastic ball floater and the brass lever are called diaphragm type ball cocks and have four screws which allow you to pop the top off, see right down the center of the shaft and even swap parts out easily, commonly the diaphragm and plunger. There's also the floatless type fill valve, the ones that operate underwater, ultra compact. Nah. But this one, the float cup fill valve, they seem to be mostly sealed units 
and they're really reliable. Uh, they rarely malfunction and when they do, you simply swap them out, you get a new one. This one had been in place for close to 15 years, so I had it in my mind to change it and also to make a video out of it. So what was the problem? I'm thinking, it's this one here. Let's take a look. Right here, debris. You'll find this rusted, crunchy pebble and metal gunk, usually at choke points in your plumbing, or strainers, cartridges, and aerators. Unscrew the aerator on a faucet, and you'll find lots of little trap debris. If it's brownish or reddish, it's oxidized iron. Black is oxidized manganese. Sometimes, when there's been plumbing work done in your home, your building, even your neighborhood, small chunks get dislodged and eventually wash down current and become trapped in places like this. And why do pipes whistle? Well, it's sort of a high frequency vibration which resonates when the flow of water or air is uh, constricted. It's like whistling, you know, when you, you breathe normally, no problem. When you constrict that passage, it whistles. Go ahead, try it yourself. I'll wait. This is the most beautiful day of my life! <laughs>